What? That's insane. a dog shit take. No, it's a, That's no, such that a bad <laughs> take. That's such a bad take. The what music's amazing. What do you mean it stinks? Ah, it's, it's just boring. It's dreadful. It's boring. <laughs> Welcome to Lights, Camera, Barstool Draft Time. Today we are drafting movies that we have rewatched the most. I don't think we're going to have a lot of crossover here, I would imagine. So what we're going to do is that we're going to start from number five and work our way forward. So think about it. You start with the one that is the fifth highest on your list and we'll work our way up okay uh the draft order today and we're joined by clemmer and marty mush uh no jeff today's mid-flight back from survivor uh so we'll start with uh predetermined the order uh, ahead of time it's going to be gooch then me then clemmer then mush uh start with gooch your fifth most rewatched movie of all time okay my fifth most rewatched movie of all time is 10 things i hate about you or, in other words, uh, the greatest on-screen adaptation of a Shakespeare work we've ever seen, uh, Taming of the Shrew. It is very weird. Gooch, that's a... My, you might be right about that, about that take, too. What's there better? haven't been a ton of, like, really great ones. There's been some that are, like, derivative, like, of Shakespeare stories. Like, obviously, yeah. like, Lion King is, like, a clear Hamlet ripoff. But, like, I think it's I think it's fantastic. Like, I know it was targeted at, like, teenagers very clearly. It's it's a Disney movie. I don't know if it first aired on Disney Channel or not. No, no, it came out in the movies. I saw it in the theaters. It came out the year I graduated high school. And it was, yeah. it was pretty good. Yeah, no, I think it's great. It's amazing soundtrack, which is, like, going to be a running theme on all these movies. Like, if a movie's got a great soundtrack, the rewatchability goes way up. Because then I can just, like, you know, throw it on in the background, work on stuff, and then just listen to that soundtrack while I'm working. So that adds a lot of value. But other than that, obviously, Julia Stiles, someone who I wish had become a bigger star than she obviously became. Heath Ledger, while he's still young, um, rom-com star still at that point, just comes in and eats mm -hmm. that role up. Uh, and then the rest of the cast is like weirdly stacked. Joseph Gordon-Levitt's in there. Gabby Union, Allison Janney, uh, a ton of stars uh, yeah. across the board. So yeah, 10 things I hate about you. That soundtrack, One Week by Bare Naked Ladies. I love one. That's a oh, yeah. Song. It's a great song. Bare Naked Ladies are pretty good. I went to their concert in Central Park. It was amazing. That's right. Yeah, we yeah. talked about that. Yeah. Uh, Bad Reputation, Joan Jett. Really good song. Very good song. Uh, let's see. I'm just going through ones I know. Sore by Ralph Sell. I barely remember that. So there's some other good ones on here. Word Up. I clapped. And that was, I, wrong movie. <laughs> what were you thinking of? Uh how to lose a guy in 10 days. Hey, listen, that uh, is a different 10 movie. That's yeah, not in the yeah. top five, but I bet it's in my top 50. It's a hell of a movie. <laughs> <laughs> like if you've had any kind of extended relationship or grew up with a sister, like you've probably seen that movie 100%. a bunch. Like, yeah. If we had a girl on this draft. I bet she would have picked <laughs> oh, that yeah. movie. Uh, 10 things I hate about you. Uh, my pick. It's one where it's definitely more of a me thing than I think a general thing. Kung Fu Hustle. Kung Fu Hustle is a movie yeah. I've watched probably a million times. I don't know why. It's just a movie. It's a foreign language movie. Uh, I only ever watched it with subtitles. I don't think I've ever watched the dub, but it's so fucking funny. It's just a, like so goddamn easy to understand uh, humor wise. And that doesn't always translate with the foreign movie. Like their senses of humor in different countries don't always resonate with us. But that one just clicks immediately. Uh, funny story. Uh, good. Like, I guess, action, too, you could say. Uh, and I just love the humor, so I'm gonna go Kung Fu Hustle. What do you think the over under is? I know I've seen any of the movies that you guys you've, you've seen. You've seen, I think, seen the rest of the bet. ones. Yeah, you I might have seen. Have. Yeah, I think you definitely have seen the rest of my list. I don't know if you've seen all of them, but you've seen like a couple. Let's right. see, Clemmer, you're up. Yeah, so uh, this is uh, man, this is, uh, a lot of these movies are movies that I also I love a great deal. This might be the one I love the most. My favorite of these currently is The Shining. Mm. Um, this came out. Uh, oh, it's definitely going to be a no for. Yeah, I didn't see that one. Yeah, this came out after uh, I was born by only about I think, a couple months. Um, I, but so it's always been in my life. My parents uh, loved the movie, so it was on all the time growing up. I think I've said on other shows. My parents didn't have there were no rules with, regarding art when I was growing up. So I could watch a radar movie when I was three. It didn't. It was just on. Like my parents had believed a weird that, upbringing, man. Yeah, I had a really yeah. weird upbringing. And I think my parents just believed like art should just be kind of just open, whatever. Um, not saying like my parents had like you know porn running around like. <laughs> You, you know, if I usually, well, I'll wait for your next pick. What Clippers yeah. next pick? Debbie does Dallas is number four. No, like so, I like they had a thing where I had to like close my eyes and there was like if I was watching like nudity with my parents, mm -hmm. like like which I also wanted to do because I was so awkward and uncomfortable anyway. But it, violence, anything went. And Shining was just always on my house growing up, mm -hmm. and it's just a really interesting, layered movie. And I've watched it a ton as an adult because you take different things from it. Is it a movie about a haunted house? Is it a movie about alcoholism? Is it a movie about being a bad father? Like, there's so many different things the movie could be, and Kubrick is so brilliant putting it all together that every time I watch it, I learn something new, and I love this movie so much, and it's so creepy and fucking scary really and weird. Kid, 
great creepy great movie. child actor performance yeah, yeah. all time creepy kid performance red rum or where, yeah red rum red, red rum, rum red rum yeah. I just keep saying it's, it's murder backwards red rum Red yeah. Rum is Murder Backwards, yeah. Which was in the original book. But the book is quite good, too. Um, yeah, the movie's King better. hates the movie, which is Well, the whole, the whole third act is different. Yeah. He's, he, what does he say? He said it's like a Lamborghini with no engine or something yeah, like that. Yeah, which is just insane. Star Trek, all, one of the best all respect to time. Stephen King. He's got to get over himself sometimes. Yeah. He hops on the timeline. He just fires off some shit takes. Yeah, I, I, he's gotten old and weird. But I will say this, though. Imagine if you wrote a book that was quite good, and then someone takes it and does probably a better job with it with like a... But changes your whole like ending and yeah, changes a lot of the yeah, means of it. it yeah, right. I think if you're an author, you understand that like source material, well, great. You can't translate everything from page to screen. And he and, probably had source material he drew from for The Shining that he changed up and shit. You know oh I mean? yeah, like I said, you know, there's a, it could be a haunted house movie. Like there's a lot of yeah. things it could be. Um, and it's like, oh no, you this guy changed my story, made it better, and maybe millions of dollars. Oh boo hoo! It's like, shut up, dude. Like so, you've made out like a bandit here. Yeah, and you also had enough movies that have been great that you, you're you fine. Shawshank do any, is... Do any people think like, oh, wow, like, uh, did you know that Stanley, that Kubrick went and changed uh, Stephen King's thing? They, they just think that's what The Shining is. They think that's like what it was. So they but I think that's, it mostly to him. That's what pisses off Stephen King, though, is that people think The Shining that is the better the story. adaptation of it is his is work. It's his story. The cubes, yeah. baby. He fucking cucked them. Yeah. He cucked you, Stephen. All right, so The Shining from Clemmer Mush, your first and second, or I guess fifth and fourth um, Well, these are very... Obviously, I think everyone in the world has watched these. I'm looking at my notes. Um, the Departed is everything I watch. That's in my top. That's, a great, that's in my top fifty. It has to be. My, I've seen that movie a ton. I watch that movie more than I'd like to. I, anytime I'm like, whenever I'm scrolling through and I get bored of yeah. like looking for a new movie, I just go. I'm a big comfort guy. I I like to know. Well, I know I'm gonna like this movie. I'm putting mm -hmm. it on every single time. You know, fucking cap. Like I can think oh, of like every, every line of that movie. It's I can the just best. Seared. It's a great um, pick. Second one, Ocean's Eleven. I oh, that would have been that's Jeff. I think 11. that's Jeff's number one all time. Ocean's Eleven is one of my favorite favorite. Such movies. a good movie. The, the, mm -hmm. the cast is crazy when you really think about it. It's but insane. my God, I fucking love that movie. Dude, like Casey Affleck's like the 80th build guy in there. He won an Oscar. Yeah. Like like eight years ago or something. So it's Marty's crazy. first two picks are just movies for the fellas. Like, yeah, <laughs> just big fellas, big fellas, yeah, fellas movies. Yeah. Yeah. Big hey, I on. watched Ocean's Eight. Yeah, it, wasn't okay. like, it stunk ass. I didn't. Ass. That's why I didn't put that one on. Here. So I've always thought it'd be interesting to do like a barstool movie, like Hall of Fame. What would that mean? What would that look like? And it's like I think it would have movies like Mari just said, Departed, Ocean's Eleven. I think so would, just dude ensemble movies, or no, just like movies, just dude movies that I think that are also very good. Mm -hmm. Just go to the IMDb like top ten page, and that's. Those are the, the movies. IMDb, pay, pay, pay IMDb rankings are like so Dark funny because they can't hide. Like IMDb, I don't think a woman has ever used that website. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have like they don't let you like if you check female, they don't let you set up an account. <laughs> and so like the reviews and like the way movies are rated on there, like it skews so hard <laughs> towards like guy movies. It's very funny. I saw some uh, TikTok about that yesterday. Whereas the girls like got, girls have boyfriends because how else would they find out about movies? Yeah, or something like that. Which is not to say there's no obviously a ton of female similar heads out there but it's just like yeah i guess so uh ocean's loving great pick though snappy funny the best. recast toe for grace in the beginning all right yeah. <laughs> amazing movie uh clem you're back up yes yeah, so this is the newest movie on my list the most recent um i saw this movie in the movie theaters when i was 14 it was the coolest movie experience of my life i feel like um, you've not seen this if it came out when you were 14 pulp fiction Yep. oh yeah. yeah um there's no and i just it, uh, it came out uh, on vhs obviously i had i watched the vhs over and over and over again i had it was a movie poster i had in my bedroom and then eventually i bought the same poster i had it in my dorm room um it's just a movie that just really made me love movies and i watched the vhs so much like over and over i'm surprised the tape didn't like run out or get or, like worn um yeah, I mean, there's so many different things in that movie. There's obviously, three different parts, the time jumps, mm -hmm. the feeling, the soundtrack. To Gucci's point, it's incredible I have the soundtrack. And it's just something you can have on. The dialogue is so crisp and so funny. It, it's almost like having like a friend in the room with you. Yeah. Name five actors from Pulp Fiction. Oh, it's easy. Bruce Willis, Christopher Walken, uh, John Travolta, Harvey Keitel, Uma Thurman. It's easy. I can keep Name five more? Probably. Did I say Ving Rhames yet? No. Um... Uh, Quentin Tarantino's in it, obviously. Julia yep. Sweeney's in it at yep. the end. Uh, oh, uh, Amanda Plummer, Tim Roth. I mean, Amanda, I, yeah, you got it, Tim probably, Roth. You'll probably keep going. That was, that was Honey Bunny, and uh, I forget what his name was. Yeah. Is this your okay. guy's favorite thing to do? Watch movies? 
it's up there. It's gotta be right. Sports the too. way you guys like, uh, talk about the way you talk about it, Gooch. I don't know how you. It's not. You say things. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. What do you mean? You, you said, said like that music. Shakespeare thing. I don't. What are you talking about? The Shakespeare. That's a book. Thing. Oh, it's because yeah. It's Ten things on. I hate about you is a Shakespeare adaptation. It's Taming of the Shrew. It's based really? on, and we're kind of shitting on Shakespeare because yeah. we. I, well, at least I am. I hate Shakespeare. A lot of Shakespeare movies, like they try to like adapt them one for one. Uh, they don't really turn out too no, well because it's stink. just like the the structure is like well Romeo like Romeo plus Juliet great example yeah like it just doesn't really play but like if you could modernize it it comes out pretty nicely you Romeo plus Juliet the uh, see I the like that. give me your earnest thought what, what do you the, think? the yeah. Baz Luhrmann yeah. yeah. I hate it. I, I don't I like Baz Luhrmann. I, I, it's so stylistic, it's hard for me to have an opinion on it. They made a Romeo and Juliet movie. I don't know if you've heard about this. The Leonardo soundtrack's DiCaprio, quite good. Uh, Claire Danes, a couple other like, big hitters from like the late 90s. Yeah, Leguizamo was in it? In yep. modern day. Yeah, hey, I was in a movie with him. There you go. Leguizamo? Yeah. He's been here like three times. I feel like. Yeah, I was, in a, uh, I was in a army support group after war. <laughs> you were in like a PTSD army support group? Yeah, it was a movie that came out on Showtime. I have to remember, I have to oh, remember the name of it, yeah. But uh, <laughs> all of them, they play, they do Romeo plus Juliet, except it's modern day. So they're all like driving around in cars instead of uh, swords, they have guns. Sick. And it's, it's awesome. Really <laughs> super stylized, yeah. like modern but they, music. But they keep the old dialogue. So they'll be like, yeah. Like, what thou up to? It's like, draw the, they'll yeah. be like, draw, draw thy, thy sword, yeah. draw thy blade, and just like holding a gun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think if you like that movie, you like anything Baz Luhrmann does. If you, you know what I mean? Like yeah. you have to like, like him to like that movie. It and is I don't him, like it him. is most Baz, but like Elvis, like that opening 20 minutes was also like that, but did not work for me. Oh, but I'm that so has sure. so much more to do with Tom Hanks. We do you like to cut Elvis? this a little bit. I really just want to show him one. I scene. liked a lot of it, yeah. but like any part with Tom Hanks fucking took me immediately out of the movie. If he so. was out of it, though, I think it was like, yeah. Well, like oh, great. yeah. If you make that one change, I think it's like a legitimately yeah, like yeah. great all time like, biopic. The way he they told that story i thought was very good but he was seriously like wanted me to like shoot my brains out yes mm -hmm. here <laughs> i love the sound effects i'm showing the gas station scene remember that yep. oh, yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> they do that Stick your thumb at I stick my thumb at you or whatever. <laughs> this looks like Malibu's most wanted. Like, literally, <laughs> yes. That's a great way of putting it. This came out when I was in high school. Every girl was obsessed with this movie. Every girl had this DiCaprio. poster in their bedroom. Everyone. Malibu's yeah. most wanted. DiCaprio fire. was hot as DiCaprio. Yeah. He was DiCaprio such a hot. And the girls' boy. lights Claire Danes. <laughs> he really was. Like, yeah. She's cool. <laughs> my whole so life and everything. Exactly. That, that came out around the same boy. time. And they. Uh, this is right after he did Gilbert Grape too. Yeah. So went from playing like, and growing pains. Yeah. True. Him playing a mentally disabled guy kind of like flies under the radar. He got not, nominated for Oscar for Yeah, him. exactly. Uh, okay, Pulp Fiction from Clemmer. Uh, my pick is going to be Hot Rod. Uh, Hot Rod I've Ooh. definitely watched more times than I care to admit. You've never seen Hot Rod? I've never seen Hot Rod. I'm super shocked That's by that. Shocking. Oh, wow, yeah. Uh, that's like a big movie for people our age. That's yeah. nuts. Never. Hot Rod's an amazing movie. Super, super funny. Very At the time, it felt like finding a hidden gem. It, it did. It didn't crush like Step Brothers or anything. No, like no. Oh, no. It, it kind of flew underneath the radar for a little bit. And it had a great cast. You have to do like movie weeks. Yeah. Like just one movie oh, that everyone watches that I haven't seen. You'll I love this one. Yeah. Andy Samberg is the main role. Then a couple love of them. the Lonely On guys are in there. Isla uh, Fisher. Isla from Fisher. Wedding Crashers. The, uh, the Crazy Redhead. Billy okay. or Danny McBride. Thank you for doing that for yeah. me. <laughs> Danny, Danny McBride. Uh, love him. Bill Hader. Um, oh, I like Delayed. Yeah, a whole bunch of other really funny What's people. Like, Will Arnett. Well. Will Arnett's all time in that. Yeah, Will Arnett. Babe, oh, babe. <laughs> I watched that. I watched that on HBO. That podcast. Will Arnett. Oh yeah, dude. It's um, it's all like SNL people, and yeah. it's all like jokes and stuff that they probably wish they could make on SNL, and, they, and like they just <laughs> would, didn't want to let them do them, and then they they put them on here, and they're all amazing. Super funny movie. Uh, and if we watched it, the scene where he falls off the mountain. I mean, and there's so many great. scenes that are great, but yeah, that one, it just keeps going and going For like and going. 20 minutes is crazy. Uh, so Hot Rod's my pick. Gooch, you're next to uh, my. Oh, I got two in a row. All right. My next one is probably going to be on a lot of our listeners lists. Uh, it is going to be Fellowship of the Ring. Mm -hmm. uh, I would go the whole trilogy, but and honestly, I've watched the first one the most times because what will happen is I just get drunk and I come home and then that's like the go to is time just to like, start watching the yes. trilogy and then you just only get that far. Well, it's like nice to like just have yeah. on. It's very relaxing. Boring. You get no, you no, you get Galadriel. Walk around the woods for no reason. The world has changed. There's the I biggest feel it reason. In the it's to save the fucking world, yeah, Clever. Sure. 
boring. Oh, that movie is. Sorry, you have a little baby brain. A little baby that's brain. That's dreadful. Those Lord of the Rings movies are dreadful. A little baby. Everyone brain. pretends they like them. No what are you pretends? talking about? That no one pre- pretends. Crazy dude. There's a high, the highest grossing franchise. In no, I know. I know. I'm well aware. I, I, I'm well aware. They dominated the Oscars. Twenty-eight years. Oscar oh. nominations. Ugh. The Oscars plus the money. That just doesn't happen. I know. I'm well aware. And I wanted to like the movie so bad. I went there so excited, and I was so because I like the Frighteners. So I'm like, all right, this is gonna be great. Same director. Here we go. Let's go. And it was oh, I was so bored. Hobbits. <laughs> I hate Lord of the Rings. It's you, so boring. You could easily be an extra in Lord of the Rings. Easily. Without a doubt. What would I like be? We'd be an orc. Oh, no, 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 he'd be he'd be a he'd be a hobbit. No, I'm too tall. Too I'm tall. six two. No, even if they did they d eight they d oh yeah, Dom like, yeah, uh, Monahan's like six two six four. No, he's Monahan's not six two. One of them was. He wasn't in law. The tallest he was, one was like Sean S, and he's like five five. Yeah. No, I think no, Dominic no. Monahan's tall. No, he's not. He's no, in law. He was tiny walking around. Yeah, he's the same height as uh whoever played Pippin, and like they're both pretty short. I need you to look up the height. You <laughs> Dominic. I hope I find the ring. Fuck those movies. Dominic Monahan is five seven. Oh no, I'm thinking of uh. What's his Gimli. face that played Gimli? Gimli John Reese Smiles yes. or whatever. Yeah. He's oh that guy is bigger. Yeah, he's tall. Yeah, he's, he's like six two. That's a what just came uh, Salah from. He's an Indiana Jones. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, so folks of the ring in the next pick. Oh yeah, I forgot. <laughs> um, uh, next one would be forgetting Sarah Marshall. Oh, uh, see that I've one. seen that. Yeah, that yeah. One. There Best you go. rom com ever. Great film. I don't know if I can go that far, but it's up there. It's definitely up there. Well, like top five, top ten. Maybe Silver Linings Playbook is the I don't know if you call that's, it a rom com or not. Yeah, that's murky. if not, then for, then Sarah Marshall's my number one. Uh, ten things I hate about you. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, but forgetting Sarah Marshall is so just good. it's fucking genius. Jason Segel is just dynamite there, and then Kristen Bell throwing heat. Mila Kunis maybe the hottest she's ever been. Maybe embrace debate. I think so. Good yeah, argument for there. me. And then once again, banging soundtrack. Great soundtrack, <laughs> different yeah. different kind of soundtrack, but the Aldous Snow and Peter, whatever his name is, uh, their dueling like musical acts are just mm-hmm. perfect. The Dracula, the, the Dracula musical, musical, the Dracula though. the musical. That's it has he such layers. That. Was yeah. it? should make. That. He, oh, I know. He it's teased like, I was it forever. Like, loved it. It he, was so creative and funny, and it just adds these layers to a rom com that you don't normally get because it's so gener- It's so like genre specific. The rom coms is they have to hit those same beats. But when you add in those funny details that Siegel did, it's so great. Great yeah. bit characters too. Yeah, like the great fake, bit characters. The fake trailers for her show with yeah, Billy yeah, Baldwin, yeah, yeah. like that's just perfect. <laughs> it's so funny. I forgot about that. It's so that. stupid. It's like a two minute cutaway scene, but it, it's just awesome. <laughs> that uh, they scared the shit out. Coral scares the shit out of me now. Oh yeah, because when he gets stuck in his yeah. leg there, I I freak out every time. But then oh, Paul Rudd comes gross. over and he's like, "You sound like you're from <laughs> London." <laughs> uh, the one I'm looking at my top ranked rom coms, Princess Bride. I, I it's fine. I know you don't care for it it's very much. Fine. It's fine. Did you fine. watch Palm Springs? No, Palm Springs is up there for me. I really like that. Crazy Rich Asians. Uh, I did. Oh. It was okay. I, I didn't That's love it. That's a great it. movie. That's my plane movie, and I cry uh, every time. The ending uh, is fine. We're counting singing. It was fine. If we're counting singing in the rain as a rom com. Instead it's, of just a musical, yeah, then I think it would be <laughs> Singing in the Rain's probably it. Eh. Manhattan. Mm-hmm. So Manhattan's the creepiest fucking. That movie's disgusting and horrible. I will go off on Manhattan. Now, if you think Manhattan's a great rom com, you're a fucking. You're you're a predator. Uh, broadcast news. Eh. That's kind of. Oh, I love it. I don't it's know almost, if that's a rom com either. If you have me saying it's two eighties, it's probably a problem. As good as it gets. Eh. Wait, like it's it. all these like James L. Brooks movies. Uh, Harry met Sally. Yeah, where's I, the Nora Ephron? I Come like uh, I, that's good. Chasing Amy, I like Chasing. Chasing Amy. Eh, it's all right. Kevin Smith movies. Tootsie, don't reach, I, Tootsie's great. There we go. We're right, we got we got somewhere. Uh, it's not a bad list. Grease. Oh, Grease musical? stinks. Great music. Grease the the movie what? stinks. What? That's Insane. a dog shit take. No, it's a, that's no, such that a bad <laughs> take. That's such a bad take. The what music's you, amazing. What do you mean it stinks? Ah, it's, it's just boring. It's dreadful. It's boring. <laughs> It's, it's it's pretty exciting. Like it's a recent. very exciting it's movie. It's not. I think I think it has some elements. The mu- anytime music comes on, it's great. Anytime the music's not on and they're just talking, it is painful. <laughs> okay, uh, Crazy Stupid Love. Never seen it. I feel like I've seen that. You've definitely seen that. Knocked up. Oh yeah, it's, it's good. All right, and the Wedding Singer it's has good. to be up near the top. I think. Uh, oh, Wedding Singer I put higher than a lot of those movies you mentioned. Yeah. High Fidelity. That's a banger. Yeah. Say anything. Eh. It's okay. It's good. Yeah. High Fidelity. A lot of these other ones are just the Long Game Polly. I love the Long Game Polly. That's and a, there's something about Mary too. Something about Mary is is not a rom. I, I have a hard time calling that a rom com. Yeah, I guess that's just a comedy, and that's yeah. one of the best comedies ever. We're, we're definitely more, but it is based around I a guess. romance. But angle. to me, a rom com has the three beats: boy meets girl, 
boy loses girl, boy gets girl back. You have to have those the three beats to be a rom com. Him kind of getting the girl. Sometimes I like when they don't get him. What do you yeah. think about set it up? You seen set it up? No, oh. that, that's not one for Glimmer. That's I think the, that's, that's one for, for everyone. Zoom, that's for the Zoomers. That's a Glenn Powell banger. Yeah, exactly. It's for that one's for the Zoomers. That's what do you that's mean? not for him. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, for getting Sarah Marshall. Great pick, I think, for this case. Yes, uh, I agree. My next one, I'm gonna do the the first two Harry Potter movies. Uh, for, uh, Sorcerer's Stone and Chamber of Secrets. You're comboing them? Yeah, you could have comboed Lord of the Rings if you wanted to. You just said that. Nah, that would have been that would have been dishonest. So you're sitting down watching both. These it's back just to the back. first two. Okay, you have to watch them back to back. Though. Yeah, it's just the first two. But I've watched you're the first for two five probably. hours watching Harry Potter. When I was a kid, I watched oh, those yeah. movies yeah. so many times, and we had the DVD of both, and I burned it. I just destroyed that CD. I watched no. it so many times. I completely get it. And it was one where like I I was big on the books before the movies came out, so like it was like the double interest in watching it again. And I was the same age as yeah. Like our age group is like the right age for like we were turning 11 perfect and that's when age. you were supposed yeah. to get Hogwarts and all that shit. So it was just a perfect storm of wanting to watch that nonstop. I think your generation and the time you guys all grew up, I think it sucks. I think it was like way too much like helicopter parents. A lot of that stuff, it seems awful. But I will say this. <laughs> what the fuck, Clever? <laughs> the one thing I really wish I'm super jealous of that I got to go yeah. through is the Harry Potter stuff. I think the Harry Potter world is mm. really interesting. I thought he was going to say Central Air. Yeah, basically, Clemmer. Not that old. Also, Clemmer hates that our Penicillin. parents cared about us. <laughs> it's not that. It's just no. That you, you hate that our parents cared about us. That's what it I is. think. There's a. I think there's a, a lot of benefits to just being off to be free. And oh, I'm so everything's so scary you in the got, world. The, so the reason they were helicopter parents because people that were roughly a little bit older than you were getting molested nonstop. Wait, that's and no not one's doing shit about. Well, they were getting molested by priests. Yeah, that was just a Tuesday for yeah, everybody. That, everybody. That's just now. Oh, he's getting kidnapped like crazy. Well, that's kids get kidnapped. So but we had discussion in the bracket, and by the way, I got some information. Only about a hundred kids are kidnapped by what strangers information each year. are you getting no i went and looked up i, I can do research marty <laughs> I, I, why i had to read it's a little easier for no, me no you just probably looked up one website no i went, went to a to couple yours. things oh, I went, no i went through a couple things very few kids get kidnapped by strangers that's a media nancy grace media whore thing these fucking guys like he's literally getting molested nonstop, and then like when they grow up and become parents like oh i don't want that to happen yeah, my kid. now you can say that. like that's a thing or this organized stuff like the priest stuff there's a lot of horrible stuff i don't think that, was, that wasn't like the priest all got together and it's like all right what are your numbers no. this week well they, no they went they, <laughs> kind of like, no they went after kids that didn't have pa- parents around so yeah, there is that, that was an individual effort that wasn't a team effort by the priest no not a team well, effort but there was a lot of it going around Do you it, was, believe this? it was an epidemic i was in a uh i was in a history channel show and it was about it's basically the the real life of eleven, the uh, of Stranger the Things. Yeah. Oh yeah, and it was like the go- our government would take street kids that didn't have families, f- friends, anything, just pick them up, inject them with whatever, and make them their soldiers. You think that's true? And uh, it's in Montauk. I think that's done worse. The government's done way worse. Montauk, yeah, that's been yeah. that's been proven, right? I CIA was is. doing that shit was in the sixties. Like, I don't know Mon- if it was kids. It was called but... the Montauk Chronicles or something. I was sounds horrible. In Montauk, there's yeah, still a place that you cannot go. Plum like, Island, isn't it? Yeah, something? I think so. It's like a place where it's uh, like, if you step here, you will be like, it, it's bad. It's still there. Yeah. It's crazy. That's very weird. Uh, but, yeah, you, was, but you guys, as younger, you don't. You never like, oh, I wish I could just go out with my friends and we could just well, allow to do whatever, kind of go out and do what we want, and not have I our parents around all the time. That was exactly, that. yeah, that was. I went exactly on my bike my childhood. and went with a lot my of a lot of kids time. were the parents were super involved, a lot more like organized sports as opposed to just playing pickup basketball with your friends. Like it was a lot more like I, I feel like, and maybe I'm wrong. I feel like that's now. I don't know about when we were. Maybe not. Up. Maybe I think right now. It's more a little more coddled. When we were, when I was kids, like oh, got on my bike and just went and out. just went out. Yeah. 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 That's I, the ideal. If you had that, then that's that's the dream. I think I, oh, I, everyone I knew had that too. We could all go out and just kind of. Oh, I had one friend parks. that was a big pussy and wouldn't like. There's always that one like their parents are always. But like, you probably had one of those probably too. I would imagine at least when you were growing up, at least one kid who was like his parents would let him do stuff. Maybe it wasn't for those it was reasons. More like he had he a nut allergy. Couldn't, couldn't see movies. <laughs> like couldn't okay. see certain movies. So that's true, I guess. Yeah. All yeah, right. and and maybe you guys are old enough where you weren't as hyper coddled. I do. I remember though that like Harry Potter, Harry Potter books came out. I was like, oh man, this seems like a cool thing to. Yeah. My cousin speaking, was a Jehovah's Witness. Couldn't watch Harry Potter. Wasn't allowed. Speaking of, mo- of a birthday, either. speaking of parents and movies, my my mom took me and my friends to see Talladega Nights for my birthday when <laughs> oh, I was wow. ten. Yeah, and she got yelled at by a bunch of other parents. Oh no! Because like, it was like rated. Like she didn't realize it was rated R. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was see, like, that, that wouldn't have happened. I don't think of my age. See that you wouldn't have gotten a yelled. Great movie. Oh, it was it's awesome. Great. We loved it. Yeah, <laughs> we quoted like a it. Milk toast movie. That's not like you and the you and the boys are talking about that at school forever. Oh yeah, yeah. 
my mom <laughs> oh, brought yeah. me and a couple of my friends to see Jackass 2. And that's okay. one where she probably might have gotten yelled at. If yeah. Anything, but that didn't. was like everybody just immediately leaves the theater and like, oh, I know what we're doing for the next month. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Gonna try and break every bone in my body. <laughs> uh, Clemmer, you're back up. Yeah, so now we're into movies that were big when I was a kid, and I just watched them on HBO or watched them on rented them or VHS over and over again. And so number three on my list is Superman, nineteen seventy eight. Mm-hmm. Um, it's the one with Christopher Reeve, Gene Hackman is Lex Luthor. I cannot. So in the eighties, HBO didn't have a very big movie library. They only had a few movies that they were able to play. So we play the same movie like three, four times a day. Like it would happen over and over again. Superman was on at least once a day for like five years. It was just yeah. always on, and it was always awesome. I love this movie so much. It's a true superhero epic. Um, I think it holds up pretty well, but then I've watched it like with my wife who's younger than me and like, she didn't really find it as amazing and as wonderful as I did, which kind of bummed me. I think she liked it, but she was like, eh. yeah, it's, it's, I don't know if the it, story's there, but you got to be honest about like the visuals, like the visuals it's are rough the visuals do not. Are they that great. bad? The story's great. They're Cause, pretty I think they, cause it's all practical effects. So I think it holds up pretty well. Are you still watching Superman? Not with Superman. Like, like, right, like, where are you still putting it on now? Um, a far less than anything else in this list, I would say. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's two movies in this list I don't really watch anymore. Um, but yeah, I, I, every couple of years I'll throw it on. Yeah. Most you got two picks. Uh, before, these are not on my lists. But you brought up a point when you're drunk. And when I used to get drunk all the time in college, we'd come back and watch Kangaroo Jack. Oh, <laughs> hell yeah. And Waffles. And you know She's what? frozen with fear. It's <laughs> fucked up. They created the reg- original selfie and didn't get any credit. They oh, still do the selfie. selfie. Thing, yeah. Yep. And also, Za bodied Anthony Anderson to following us on Instagram. Really? <laughs> no way. How? We, we did a viral, me and Za had a viral video <laughs> happen. Mm. And it was like one of those where like Za's small and yeah, I'm yeah, big yeah. and all yeah. that. And Anthony Anderson posted on his Instagram and didn't tag us. And Za went to war on him. <laughs> like, he threatened to sue him, all this oh stuff. And he DM Za being like, I'm so sorry, all this, and followed both. He still follows us. Wow. It's very funny. Holy shit. Um, also, waiting, waiting was one of mine as well. Wait, waiting doesn't hold up as well now, but I did it. Was, watched a ton. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Go, go to back. restaurants for quite some time after that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> go back and rewatch waiting, and you're like, what the uh, fuck? I haven't watched oh, that in so long. Yeah. It's one of those where you go back and watch it. It's, oh. it's, not, it's, <laughs> it's not like a PC thing. It's like you just watch it, like, oh, that joke's just not funny. <laughs> Not yeah, that's kind of how younger, Kevin Smith fun. movies are. They're like when I was 15, they were the most fun, yeah. the funniest things in the world. You watch them when you're in your 30s, you're like this doesn't, this you're isn't like, funny at all. Oh, Clerks is Two good. is actually the funniest one of the bunch. Clerks Two is still <laughs> the Star I love Wars Clerks Two ranked debate in Clerks. Two yeah, no, I think I think you're right because there's some maturity behind that yeah. script that isn't there for his earlier films. So I'm yeah. three and two now. Yeah, yes. Um, three. I don't know if anyone. I'm not. Even, Twenty one was a movie. Oh I watched. yeah. All the time. I, the I think it's a great Kevin Spacey. Movie. Kevin Spacey. Yeah. I don't know the guy. What's his name. face? He was going to be a star and then yeah. he just never blew he was up. He's the most yeah. plain face man of all time. I he think. was in that and across the universe in like back to back years. Fuck, I know his name. Um, what was that kid's name? Fuck. Jared something remember. there. 21 is a good movie. That was like my first introduction to MGMT also. Oh, yeah. They had two yeah. great MGMT songs, one to open it and another one like mid film. Yeah, I love that movie. Just like the fact he's such a nerd and his nerdy friends doing yeah. the robots fucking oh, yeah. thing. And then he just turns into the sick guy. Kevin Spacey was actually really good. He's good. Great in actor. Movie he's in basically. Yeah, it's, it's very unfortunate. Other stuff is kind of. <laughs> it's very unfortunate. He is yes. like one of the best actors of his generation. Yeah, no, he <laughs> yeah, is. Yeah. And listen, it wasn't surprising when I heard it. Fucking Clemmer thinks your kid should hang out with him, though. Yeah. No, I didn't know. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I don't think parents should be. You know, Clemmer's like, kids today too soft. Come on. He's a weird, up, you know, he's touch weird, him a little bit. He's a weird fucking guy. I can tell you that. Um, but my second one is this is another fe- The Town. I love oh, that's, the town. that's in my top 30 most town rewatched. Is, you like boys, man. The, the Town boys. and The Departed. Like well, the the next, chilling. My first one is something that my favorite movie of all time. Wait for it, obviously. But The Town just really gets me going. I'm mm. a Ben Affleck fan. Ben Affleck's great. Great, I'm a big great director, actor. very good actor. Awesome bounce back too. You know what I mean? His 2000 to 2010 was horrible. Yes. And then after that, he really picked it back up. The way back. Or that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the coaching. The coach. He's really good in that. He should have an fantastic. Oscar nomination for that. It was a very weak yeah. year. I think he got he got screwed a little bit there because he's yeah. fantastic. The trailers for that movie did it no favor. Uh, no, it true. didn't. You know what movie I wish was better was Triple Frontier, which he was in. Oh, I, never, I never saw that. So forgettable. Great three three cast members yeah. in that. Or actually, honestly, all four were really good. And just nothing. Just kind yeah. of a bummer of a movie. Uh, so The Town and 21 for Mush. Clemmer, you're back up. Uh, am I number two? Yeah. Uh, Batman 1989. 
um, Michael Keaton, Jack Nicholson. Uh, this came out the day I moved from uh, New York to New Hampshire, which is June 23rd, 1989. Um, it was my last day of fourth grade. And I was bummed I couldn't watch it until the next day because mm-hmm. we had to move. Uh, and uh, VHS came out on my 10th birthday. And my parents got it. It was the first VHS we ever owned uh, that we didn't tape off of HBO. You know, if the VCR, we actually like own the rear one. I'm Oh, my God. I watch it so much. I used it as my uh, niche in uh, the dozen one on one. Um, I've just I've seen the movie so many times. Uh, I, I still think it's great. Is it as great as Dark Knight? No, of course not. But it's a fantastic movie. I really love it. It's Tim Burton as best. Yeah, and it shouldn't work either. It's, it's probably the only one I've seen a superhero movie is Black Knight, Dark Knight, Dark, Dark Knight, Knight yeah. which is fantastic. Black Knight's a great movie though. You ever watch that, Martin Lawrence? Martin Lawrence. Yeah. <laughs> That's a funny as you ever watch Black Knight. No, I don't think Mar- so. Mark Lawrence is like a oh, Mar- Lawrence, he back yeah. in time. Is he wearing a Jets jersey at all? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's wearing like a Jets jersey. He like works at like a medieval times type of restaurant or something, and he accidentally gets transported in a portal back in time to like medieval <laughs> England. And it's, it's very funny. What's the uh, Martin Lawrence movie where he's uh, the basketball coach? He's the basketball he, coach. He's a coach of uh, like he's a coach of like a bunch of sixth graders. He was a. He was a professional coach, and it's a great movie. Rebound. 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 Yeah. Fire movie. There you go. Oh, Beans is in it. That's all I need to hear. Oh, Rowan Atkinson? No, fucking. No, not no, Mr. Beans. Beans. Uh, Beans, even Stevens Beans. Yeah, even Stevens Beans. Oh. That's, it's a Disney Rebound's kid. Rebound's a fire movie. That's, is, uh, oh. He's a Disney. We had a kid Yeah, in even Stevens. Just yeah. like yeah. Beans. Yeah, the Shia LaBeouf show. Yeah, yeah right. he got it bad. You guys do a Disney movie draft, Evan? Because I was... Oh. Like Disney original movies? Yeah, like the... We've talked about it. I wasn't a Disney kid much growing up. So, oh. like, most of the ones I've seen, I've seen more recently. The Jewish basketball team? Yeah. Ah, uh, shit. What I like the uh, the Luck of the Irish. Oh, the that Irish. guy's sick. Yeah, Double that team. Was awesome. Double team. Du- one of the worst basketball moves move of all time. Of all was- time when she's going like this. She travels six times. Yeah. <laughs> it was a hor- uh, bad movie. Uh, so, Batman 89. Uh, I'm back up. I'll do one that was on TV just nonstop. It was on, I think, specifically FX a ton. TBS a bunch, too. The Mummy. Oh, the, yeah. The Brennan Fraser Mummy, I've watched it probably a trillion times. It's and good. like It's a good movie. It's, it is legitimately very good. And it's just one where it's just constantly on. It was fun. It was thrilling. And we had talked about it a bit when we were going to do the scariest characters draft. Um, the Scarabs. The Scarabs. I, they go I was mad sin. Jeff didn't include that. Yeah. I didn't realize oh. until after and we st- I started editing it. I was like, we forgot to do the fucking Scarabs. from That scared the shit out of me yeah. when I was a kid. Me too. It's like horrifying, horrible. Um, I've watched that movie once. I was very drunk in college. Yeah, like, very drunk. It's, it holds up very well. Good. It's a like good cast, good music, good action. The, the CGI weirdly holds up where it really okay. shouldn't. Yeah, um, and it's cool. It's just a good movie. It's a good, good adventure. Good ride in Universal. I'd say it's the, uh, about the closest. I've, there's been a lot of movies try to replicate like, like the, the Indiana, Indiana Jones effect, thing, yeah. and I think the Mummy might have been the one that come. Obviously not. It's not Indiana Jones, but I do think it's come the closest to catch that same vibe. Yeah, I think it is definitely, I would say, the closest. Yeah, no one else has gotten that same level, and it might just be the time period, too. That yeah, I don't know, helps, but like it's it's really good. I love that movie. Um, Gooch, your last two, well, being number two and number one. Uh, my number two, 2007, I think it's one of the best comedy movies of all time. It's super bad. No, yeah. it's fantastic. Um, yeah. yeah, that's just like. That's a movie you just sit there and rewatch with your friends like over and over and over again and then sit there and just once you quit watching it, you sit there and just feed the quotes back at each other over and over and over yeah, again. It still hits. Yeah, like it's it's fucking hilarious. Like it changed it. I don't know if it changed comedy, but like no, it changed it, our vocabularies drastically. I, um, see, oh, I think it was. So I think it was the best of that of that era. Yes, that group, but that's yeah. how we everyone talked. So like I don't think it really changed comedy because it actually just brought like a spotlight to how people, yeah. kids talked. Yeah, speak. To, that was it wasn't a very like hello very kid hello fellow kids movie. No, because I hated those comedies growing up. Like yeah, God. how old were you guys when this came out? Super bad. Twelve. Thir- yeah, thirteen. It's oh like, my god, it was peak time. If I if I was your age, I, this would be my top five because I yeah. if I because it's like a perfect movie if you're twelve. Oh perfect yeah, perfect movie. Yeah, yeah, like it it was. It was perfect. Yeah. And it was you, there's nothing there's nothing else you say. It's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jonah Hill, Michael Sarah's still like he was still he hadn't gotten in, into his kind of weird hippie Beautiful look face, yet. Yeah. Uh, he was still like kind of cute little John Michael or Perfect John guy. or George Michael. Um yeah. It must be so weird for you guys because you grew up with these great comedies uh, up until 2010 and the whole world changed or the culture changed or whatever. And movies aren't funny anymore. They just aren't. They, well, though, I think those comedies have gone to TV, like those writers. And yeah. It's just easier to get something green. There lit. hasn't been a good comedy since like 
2010. Studios don't want to like fund them. This, this year, the this year has been a few great ones. I also think our society changed what we think is funny, what we're not allowed to do anymore. Well, yeah. it, no, honestly, it's the real thing is just money, and studios don't like they don't think they can make a huge return on comedy, which is true. Every time they put one out, they just don't do well, regardless of the quality of the movie. So, like, they're like, we're not going to get another Hangover. Why don't we just put our money into a, another Marvel movie? But it's a chicken and the egg thing. No. Like, uh, like movies weren't funny anymore. no but now they put out movies and some of them are funny and they just bomb in theaters because no one goes to see them because you're also if you see like Oppenheimer right that's such like a in your face like you can't wait to get to the theater but you see a comedy like I'll get to it you exactly know? I mean that's Barbie like, is technically comedy that was the biggest movie Born Brothers ever had uh, that's, that's like yeah. Different. Or is that more cultural? It's like genre cultural. bending, tapping yeah, into something. Thing. It's yeah. that too. But like, but, think of a movie like Death of Stalin. Like Death of Stalin was in theaters. It probably made like twenty thousand. Oh, but that's not gonna. That's never gonna make. That's that. You can't market that. But I'm saying even the ones that you could market. I like, think like Holmes and Watson. Like that. That's John C. Riley and Will Will Ferrell. Like oh, they united in a and, shitty movie though. It's a shitty movie. But, but like, so what's a funny movie night? that should have been that could have been marketed better that that didn't Bloggers. make money? Blockers, Blockers. Blockers uh, I think I, I think John Joyride Cena. this year. Joyride is uh, incredible. Joyride is literally just like comedy pulled from 2009. Like yeah. it is dead on. Like who's you, in it? Uh, yeah. Stephanie Sue, Ashley Park. It's, like a, it's a girl comedy, like, but yeah. it's very raunchy. Like the I just humor, don't think this is, the but there's no stars in that though. Stephanie Sue, dude, Stephanie two Sue, Oscar yeah, <laughs> or two, one Oscar winning, or no? But you, that's not like a top line, a big movie though. Those, those, that's not gonna make a hundred no, no, million dollars. Even ones where they do here? get like a good cast of groups or people together, like they still bomb the theater. But and also, like, I mean, they do better later. But like they just don't do that. But also, level. it was like when when Superbad came out. Jonah Hill and Michael Sarah and were not, yeah, like no, but you had Judd Apatow and Seth, Seth Rogen. Rogen but you know. Ju- no, well, Seth Rogen was a pretty big name. You had Seth Rogen, and you knew Seth Rogen and Judd Apatow were involved. No, you were excited. I was an adult and I saw it. I was very excited to go see that. Well, what, what about what movies pre? Well, I'd, you had obviously like Freaks and Geeks, but what movies pre that where you had to be excited about Seth Rogen? Forty. I mean, I, I love Freaks and Geeks, but Forty Year Old Version. He he was in. Um, I was had was that um, like the same year. Around the, I thought. Superbad was a little later. Superbad was a, like two years after that. Yeah. 40 Year Old Virgin came out in 2005. 2000, end of 2005. So, so you yeah. guys are role models, Ben? I love, love yeah. role models. Very Finn. funny. So That's funny. Cool. Yeah, and that's another movie that didn't do great in theaters. That it did. still made like 40... I think it made a profit. It, it definitely made a, a profit. That, a that tidy that profit. Hard. A small yeah. one. That, that couldn't have been hard. That maybe didn't. <laughs> it didn't cost anything to make. It was the best... The most... The thing they spent the most on was probably like the sets for like the LARPing or whatever. Right. I, mean, I don't know. I just I feel like comedies aren't fun. Like I think the reason they don't make money more is because they're not funny anymore. You seen Theater Camp? No. Got to watch Theater funny Camp, movie. man. Fucking hilarious. Uh, but anyway, super bad. And then your last pick, Gooch. Uh, my last pick is another comedy from I think the same year. Uh, but a movie I think is even funnier. It's Walk Hard, uh, the Dewey Walk Cox story. Funny. Um, yeah, no, that's just that's like watch, it might be my favorite stuff. movie of all time. Uh, Martin, Martin, it is yeah. just so. It's perfect in every way. Uh, the bits kill me. The running bits, the the performances, the the music, the original music, which I think should have been Oscar nominated. Legitimately great songs that are funny at the same great time. Cast. Great cast, like a cast that just kind of keeps showing up. <laughs> like you just keep going, oh, they're in this. Like the cameos are perfect. Jack White as fucking Elvis just shows yeah. up at some point. Does a hilarious Elvis impersonation. Yeah. This funny Beatles too. Yeah, the Beatles, the Beatles bit. The Beatles bit. So funny. Paul Rudd, Jack Black, uh, Justin Long. Yeah. And who who played Ringo? Um, uh, it was Jason Schwartzman. Yeah, Jason Schwartzman. <laughs> I made a song You know who loves this movie? Uh, Blind Mike. Kirk's oh. sidekick, what? Blind Mike, loves Walk Hard. Oh, okay. They're going to say he hates it. No, he loves it. It's like one of his it's favorite. because the music is so great. You don't even have to see the yeah, screen. You have to watch this actual movie. Uh, <laughs> that was good. Kristen that was, Wiig, I was Jenna trying Fisher. to think of something like that. and what to say there, Gooch. That there was go. fantastic. Frankie Muniz? Oh, Frankie Muniz is Buddy Holly. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Forgot about that. So I'm going after Buddy Holly, the big bopper, Elvis, and then me? <laughs> yeah. And then the jizz man in that as well. Oh, yeah, he's one of his kids. Yeah. He's one of his, like, 80 kids. <laughs> yeah. It's a funny-ass movie. Pop Star 2, I would add to that list. Very similar. Got a lot of lists. Got a lot of movies. Pop so yeah. funny. It's yeah. works. Uh, so it's great. I'm a TV show guy, so that's why yeah. I'm, like, I, I'm i excited to watch movies. Uh, my last pick is going to be Guardians of the Galaxy. I talk about it all the time. That's a movie where I can watch it no matter what mood I'm in. And, like, I could be looking for something funny. I'll watch that. I could be looking for something with action. I'll watch that. I could be looking for something just turn your brain off. I'll watch that. Does not matter. I can watch Guardians and I'll get a good time out of it. 100, I have 100 times. Uh, when it came out, I think I, I didn't get it on DVD, but I bought it on like streaming on Amazon. So I, I just 
burned that out too. Like I've watched it so many times. I wish I could see like the actual numbers. But Guardians of the Galaxy, I've watched it a trillion times. Still really like it. And another one where you're talking about music, Guardians of the Galaxy soundtrack yeah. is one of the best maybe ever. I think like he, he doesn't like it because it's, so it's like... I know you don't like it. I know. It's the same songs you heard your whole life. You put any classic rock yeah, stage, you've it's the same heard your 14 whole life. songs. You've heard your whole life. I'm surprised, you, I'm surprised you guys have. I just feel like they were everywhere. I mean, no, well, it was just like fucking Justin Timberlake for us. No, I know, but like when you're in your... I didn't choose... To, like when my, it was my parents' car. They would play those songs. Yeah. I didn't seek those songs that's out. Very, that's very unique to you. That is not a universal... Oh, I don't know. I'm I, 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 sure us. I'm sure you're right. I think it's maybe unique to like my generation not to me yeah but uh so but guardians of the galaxy for me clem your last pick um yeah i saw this movie in the theaters when i was five i uh, loved it then i still love it now it's back to the future um this was on hbo all the time we we taped it off of hbo so i watched like the vhs recording of it so many times um it's just it's a perfect script um there's so many fun little like i say easter eggs like callbacks to things like even the the mall, it's Twin Pines Mall. But when um, Marty's in the door and he runs over a pine, and later on the same mall was then called Lone Pines Mall. So like those little things like that make it like super rewatchable too. And Michael J. Fox, Christopher Lloyd are awesome. And when Zemeckis remembered how to direct still. Yeah, so when he was a good, good director. Movie. Yes, and he wasn't so obsessed with weird CGI yeah. Polar Express people. Was it Was it Back to the Future, the one where Spielberg or Lucas like intervened? <laughs> Was it Spielberg was involved? Was it? There was a Zemeckis project where, yeah, Spielberg like stepped in at certain points and was like, yeah, I think you should do this instead. Yeah, Spielberg was definitely because, you know, Zemeckis learned at the feet of Spielberg uh, in the 1941 movie that Spielberg made as a comedy with Belushi that bombed. Uh, Zemeckis and Gale wrote that. So they had been, had a relationship for a few years. So Zemeckis gotcha. uh, helped him get that greenlit too. Because no one wanted to touch a movie about a guy that has his mom, has, has a crush on him. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. His mom was kind of a baddie. <laughs> Leah Thompson? I mean, hello. What do we know? Caroline Red, the Red City. Dawn. Let's go. I mean, Zoe Deutsch. Yeah. Red, Red Dawn. And uh, who else was, is her? In All the Right Moves with, uh, who is it with, Leah with Tom Thompson Cruise? Red Dawn? Patrick Swayze? No, girl. Ray Dawn Shong? Was she in that? No, I don't think so. No. I forget who. There was another very famous woman. I, I forget her name. Um, that's a good movie. Russians and Cubans invade America. Who and else? Who's in that? Teenage that? kids that are uh, trying to like lead an insurgency against them in Colorado. I'm in for that. Yeah, cool. That's they made a remake a few years terrible. ago. Terrible. Yeah. Josh Peck. I don't know what the fuck they were thinking there. Uh, Mush, your last pick. Uh, one of my favorite movies, Four Brothers. I've watched it. That's a great pick. I've watched watched Marty, are you lot. from Boston and we don't know? <laughs> <laughs> this nope. is like the I'm most getting, like That's fucking, Detroit. That's Detroit. That, this one's Detroit. Yeah. Yes, yeah. but the uh, I hate Boston it's, too. It's a Boston it. movie in spirit. I it is, yeah, yeah, it is. It actually really is. Because I <laughs> when you said it, I forgot where it was just it was just snow everywhere. Yeah. But I love that. That was on cable a lot. FX. That's an FX, FX banger. All the time. But I love but Four, Four Brothers, one of my favorite movies. I've watched that five million times too. Yeah. When Jack dies. Every oh. time he goes out that door, I'm like, no, oh, oh. I'm back. I just imagine like a Boston guy and be like, I can't be racist. My favorite movie's Four Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> I just love the season when they're just like hanging out and being like being pals. You're, this is you're, again another all boys pals pick. Basically. Yeah. I like Even when, when they like, go into the basketball game to stop the game, but like happening, it's yeah. great. When uh, he has sex with Sofia Vergara on a washing machine or something. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yep. It's a good scene. Yep. <laughs> it's a great movie. Yeah. yeah. I just, I, I like a little violence. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking Andre 3000 weirdly putting in a pretty good performance. Andre 3000 was sneaky, a good actor. Yeah. He hasn't done anything in a while, but like he, like he's kind of like, you don't even notice that he's Andre 3000 and like semi pro. Yeah. Like you're just like, oh, it's just comedic. He's actor. good in that. Yeah. yeah. Fucking Chiwetel Ejiofor in Four Brothers too. He's the bad guy. Oh fuck, he is. Yeah, and they when he dies and they put him come through the ice or whatever. Yep, it's a great scene. These are good picks. You might actually only uh, you might win this whole thing when we put up a, a vote for it. Uh, so Gucci's picks. The last one uh, wasn't good for me. <laughs> uh, Walk hard, super bad. Forgetting Sarah Marshall, Fellowship of the Ring, Ten Things I Hate About You. I have Guardians of the Galaxy, The Mummy, the first two Harry Potter movies, Hot Rod, Kung Fu Hustle, uh, Clamor, You have Back to the Future, Batman eighty nine, Superman seventy eight. Uh, Pulp Fiction and The Shining. Most you have Four Brothers, The Town, Twenty One Oceans, Eleven, and The Departed. Yeah, and I think he's fun to fucking win this whole thing. I mean, That's... if Boston shows up, yeah, he's winning. He's <laughs> yeah. winning everything. Uh, Good Christians. A lot of Mark Wahlberg in there. <laughs> Uh, but that's the draft. We'll be back. That's next. A lot of Mark Wahlberg. A lot. <laughs> I'm a Wahlberg guy. Stay yeah, up, I can see that. Way. Stay prayed up. Just because of all the the, the nonsense that was they were talking about was going to happen today. 
like terrorist wise, I was kind of like, can we get Mark Wahlberg in here? <laughs> no, yeah. If anybody's no, going to stop it. It's going to be him. Let's make sure he gets his ass over here. Tight. I expect some thank yous. We're, we're, we're podcasting. Yeah. <laughs> we're on the front lines. We're front, we're front line. Exactly. Workers. We're, we're close. We're pretty close to all the big centers. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's our draft. Uh, we'll be back next week with Jeff, uh, but we'll see you then.